Over two years ago, Beacon released the first three products in their line of audio gear, the Beacon Mic, the Beacon Mix, and the Beacon Mix Create. And when they launched, they were largely loved, and people couldn't help but see the potential in the company and its devices. Chief among those future fantasies was an XLR audio interface that could do whatever their USB mic could do. Well, they've done it. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I am Joe Finley and today we are talking about the Beacon Studio. It has been a long wait for a new piece of gear from Beacon, save of course for the mic arm, but I can tell you it has been worth the wait, so let's get a look at it. In the box you'll find the Beacon Studio, a USB-C to USB-C cable with USB-C to USB-A adapter, and a quick start guide. So what exactly is Beacon Studio? Well, it's a small audio interface that's going to take any XLR microphone you have and give it all of the gifts that they gave you in the Beacon mic, plus a few extra things that we'll get to in just a minute. But among those gifts, you're getting simple audio controls, real-time audio monitoring, and most importantly, their onboard DSP. Beacon signal processing is some of my favorite out there right now, and mainly because it's not actually taking up any computer processing to do it. It's all being done on device, freeing up that bandwidth for your stream or whatever else you're doing. So let's get a closer look at the Beacon Studio. So as you can see, it's an incredibly simple device. It's very light. It's all plastic body. It's got a single knob that you can press in to mute your microphone, but the actual knob is controlling your headphone audio. On the back of the device, this plastic extension that looks like a handle is actually just extra footing to help secure the Beacon Studio in place. It just helps to keep the cables from pulling back or pulling down on the device. And in terms of I.O., you've got your XLR jack, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for zero latency monitoring, and two USB-C ports. One goes to your main PC, and the second one could go to another device. That could be a second PC to create a two PC setup, go to a PlayStation 5, anything like that. So usually around this time, that's when I say, hey, let's give it a listen to see how it sounds. But you've been listening to it the whole time. This Rode PodMic USB has been hooked into the Beacon Studio since the beginning. But this isn't the only microphone I'm going to test. We're actually going to test out two additional microphones with this that are very different in style and price, and we'll see how they all sound. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Beacon app, that's their software solution for mixing and everything else, then this will all look very new to you. But if you actually are familiar with Beacon and maybe own some of their products it's still going to look a little new so let's have a look so we're in the application right now and if you look at the top corner here you'll see the beacon studio as one of your devices i have a profile set up for it already it'll have a default profile when you originally set it up i just renamed it after i configured all my settings and what's cool about this and it's something that i'm going to do as i test the new microphones is that i can create additional profiles for each different type of microphone so i don't have to go through and change all the settings i can just change between my profiles as i switch mics now one thing that's different from the older version of the beacon app is this used to be where your beacon mix create as a device showed up so you would open it up here now it says mixer profiles so you're going to do essentially the same thing here you can see that it's assigned the beacon mix create as one of my profiles already but what i can do is i can actually take this and i can change it for different shows that i might be doing i might have a podcast that i do where i have one setup i might have my stream that has another setup and then i might have this youtube channel with a third setup so i can set all those things up individually it's important to notice somebody who owns a beacon mix create that none of the functionality has gone away with it with these changes all of these audio sources will still be available on your mix create and still able to be controlled the same as ever and that includes muting your mic even though you have the mic mute on the studio so if you don't have room on your desk or at least at the forefront for an extra device you could always tuck it away in the back because you can still control it via the mix create if you have one now people who know this app and have a keen eye might have noticed something already there's a couple of extra things down here you're going to see outgoing studio link assignments so beacon has a new thing called beacon link so if you have a two pc setup you can actually send out four different audio sources to that setup and it can be anything it could be your audience mix it could be any of your sub mixes or an individual source that you want to send out and on the second pc you can use the beacon link companion app and send an additional four sources back to the first pc so you can see here i have these four link in sources and those would be the audio sources that are incoming from the second pc back into the first one so what this does for you as a streamer is it really changes up where you can bring your audio in from or send it to it's fantastic and because i've added those four links as a source they will show up on my beacon mix create as well as in the routing table here so you can set it up and you can see it's just defaulted to basically match exactly what I've got everywhere else but you can unclick these and change them any which way you want I'm gonna do a full tutorial on setting up and using the beacon studio as well as the updated version of the beacon app so we're not gonna get too far into the weeds on the app this time so if you already own the beacon mix these three buttons here are gonna look very familiar to you this is your mic chain right here so this is where you set up everything related to your microphone so right here is just a simple setup your gain now if we look up at EQ you see we've got a really nice EQ set up here and you can keep adding bands too if you want to get really really specific with it uh, they do have presets available so you can go here and there's a no eq it'll just be nice and flat a uh, low broadcast voice so that'll be a more bassy version and then you 
got a high broadcast voice that'll bring up the high tones a little bit more. Now, by having the guide on, which I do have, you can see that it actually tells you what all the different frequency ranges are actually doing at a given time. And then here you've got a de -esser. So if you got really bad sibilance where the s is getting really bad, I've had that quite a bit. And honestly, in this testing, I don't really know exactly where this is, but you can make those adjustments here. And again, listening to yourself in real time is really good. So what I would actually recommend is doing some test phrases that have a lot of plosives and sibilance and high volume and low volume. So you can test against any variable. Then you got a bass enhance here, and that's just going to bring up your bass a little bit, obviously. And then you got your exciter to bring your high end up and make it a little bit more exciting. Then here you got your noise suppression. And this is one of my favorite noise suppression tools in pretty much any mic software right now. But again, we'll get real specific on that in the tutorial. Then you got an expander. This is kind of like your noise gate. So as long as the audio is up here in this kind of blue area, it's not going to get cut off. But as soon as I go low, this and any other noises that might fall under there, like could be keyboard typing, that could be distant noises like construction in the background, anything like that. Those things just flat out won't be picked up by the mic. Now, if you start talking and those noises are in the background, you probably will hear them a little bit, mainly if they're not consistent because then the noise suppression isn't going to be able to help you the way it does. Then you got your compression here. So that takes all your high stuff and brings it down. Now I got my normal setup here. That's a four to one compression ratio. I did this under advanced. You can do a simple setup here and just kind of do your compression amount. I don't know what any of this really means, so I don't ever use it, but you can see the attenuation as I'm talking right now, you can see that it's pushing down my audio so I don't get too loud. And that's the difference between what you're seeing. So if I go back to the mic setup and you can see I'm really in the peak area when I'm talking here, but you can see it never actually gets to it on the side there. And that's because the compression is doing its job. And then you got some headphone controls. You can do an equalizer on here and you can choose the balance between how much of your mic you're listening to and how much of everything else you're sending to your headphones you're listening to. Then you got here your Beacon Studio lighting options. This looks very similar to if you have the Beacon mic. So you have a couple of different lighting styles. You can have a solid color. You can have a peak meter, which is pretty cool. As you're talking into it, you'll see the color changing and you can change the colors to absolutely whatever you want. So I have my typical gold. And if I go to my purple, now as I'm talking, it goes purple and the solid spectrum is just going to go through a spectrum of colors. The speed and direction makes the color spectrum actually spin around on the light ring on the Beacon Studio itself. And then down here, you have some options as to what happens when you mute the microphone. So right now I have it set up when if you hit mute, it goes red. That's pretty standard. And then if the USB is suspended, that's if it's powered on still, but if for whatever reason, it's not connected to things, it'll tell you what to do. And in this case, it just has to turn off the LED ring so I could look at it and see, hey, it's not working. Last thing here is the settings. You're just going to see your firmware and all that. If an update is available, this is where you'd find it. But the most important thing right now is where we're talking about that two PC setup. If you want to be able to communicate back and forth between your second PC, you need to turn this on. It's going to enumerate, create those four sources, and then you're ready to go. Okay, so we've heard plenty from this microphone. Now I think it's time that we listen to a couple different microphones and see how we do. So the next microphone we're testing is another Rode microphone, but this time it's a condenser. It's the Rode NT1 fifth generation. It's important to remember if you're going to be setting up a condenser microphone, you're going to need the 48 volt phantom power and you locate it here underneath the mic chain information. And here we are all set up with it. I love using these microphones, but one of the big problems that I have is all of the ambient noise. It just cannot seem to resist sucking in all the ambient noise. I have a computer right here with a fan going. If I'm quiet, you don't hear a thing and I love that. Now I will say that the air conditioner was on during the previous test and not this one. That's because the last one was a dynamic mic. It was actually picking up a much more directional polar pattern. And this one, because it's sucking in so much, you wouldn't hear it if it was silent. But when I was talking, you'd start to hear it kind of come in behind my voice and it was a little bit annoying. I'll show you an example though. So now as I start to talk, you can hear the air conditioning coming up a little bit in the background, a little bit of her, her, her. But when I fall silent, then there's absolutely nothing. Now, the good news is I really only break this thing out if I'm doing voiceover work for something. I don't typically do a lot of that during the summer anyways. And if I do sessions, they are typically short. So if I have to turn off the air conditioner for a few minutes to get some things done, it's really not that big of a deal. But a real challenge to you is how much are you actually hearing that audio right now? Because I've got music playing in the background on this video and things like that. It'd be very curious to hear how much of that comes up and if it's in any way distracting. But the bottom line is I'm really happy to be able to use this microphone essentially as a USB microphone with just a tiny little audio interface and have all the processing done there instead of on the computer. But now I think it's time to move on to our third and final microphone. And the final mic we're testing is the updated version of arguably the most popular microphone, especially in podcasting and streaming, the Shure SM7DB. And here we are. So honestly, my thinking on this is I've been gifted something really great here because while my normal microphone through most of these videos has been the Beacon mic, I now have all of the strengths of the Beacon mic with all of the strengths of the Shure SM7DB. 
SM7B, now SM7DB, and I think I might just have my new permanent setup. So my overall impression of the Beacon Studio is that it is overall a fantastic item to have. If you were thinking about buying a Beacon microphone, but you had an XLR microphone that you really liked, you can now basically just take the guts out of the Beacon microphone and attach it to this via the Beacon Studio, and you're going to be in great shape. Now, the Beacon Studio comes in at $249 US, and it's a little pricey, but not for what it is and what it gives you. It only really gets pricey if you have to buy things on top of that. So if you were doing this as a starter kit and you had to get your first microphone too, I'd recommend doing something like the original Rode Pod Mic. It's very cheap. It's a fantastic microphone. And then if you decide you want to move up to a different microphone down the road, you could go ahead and do that. If you already have the Beacon Mix Create, you now have the perfect overall setup in front of you. You have fantastic processing for your microphone and you have great overall control for all of your broadcast. But if you don't already have the Beacon Mix Create, you have a choice to make. The Beacon Studio comes with all of this software, so you'll have access to all the mixing no matter what, you just won't have physical control over it outside of the computer. My recommendation is to buy the two things together, arguably when they're on sale would be best, because the two things paired together are just absolutely fantastic. Now the good news is even at full price, you're still going to be paying less than something like the Rodecaster Duo, and yes, you'll be missing out on the second XLR input, but you will be gaining a much more robust dual PC system. Even though the Rodecaster Duo has one, I'd argue that this one with the Beacon Link is better. Now if you want to compare straight interface for interface, this one's actually about $90 more than the Elgato Wave XLR. Its big advantage, other than being just part of the whole Elgato ecosystem, is also that you can control your mic gain and your headphones from the same knob. But what you're not getting, it can be very important, obviously the dual PC stuff, you can't do that through the Wave XLR without a bunch of magic. And the on-device processing, that doesn't exist in Elgato. It's all done through the Wavelink software, meaning it's all done on your computer. This is all done on the studio, and I argue that that is a very big advantage. So as somebody who loves gear and is clearly never satisfied, I'd love to see a setup that has a second XLR and headphone jack. And yes, I know that'll bring up the cost a little bit, but imagine something this small being a complete podcast package for somebody. And if I wanted to turn this thing into a little bit of a toy, I'd maybe have some buttons on the top that could do maybe a little bit of voice modulation, something like that, maybe some sound effects. These developers are the team that were behind the Go XLR, so those kind of things would be cool to see in the future, but none of those are necessary for this to be what it is right now, and it's fantastic. And there's a million in other ways to bring those toys to life without having to do it through this. So if you get a chance to read my review in cgmagonline.com, you'll see I gave this a 9.5 out of 10. The only knock that I give it is that the physical control is a little bit limited. You're able to mute the microphone. You're able to adjust your headphones. You can't adjust the gain, but I don't actually have a problem with that because the Beacon Mix Create actually gives me that ability anyways. But what do you guys think about the Beacon Mix Studio? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. And while you're going down there, make sure to hit the like, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you know when I have new videos coming out. And make sure to go check out my other channel if you're interested in it. It's called Miscast Members and it's all about Disney and theme parks and all that kind of thing. That's going to be it for this video. Why don't you check out one of these videos? And until next time, my friends, let's get to work.